Sorry guys, you don't see locks like this anymore. They did a lot of things right on this old Corbin. Um, got a really nice shackle, plenty of length there, so it gives give you some reach to get into the uh, to get into the hasp if you got to reach in a little ways. Uh, it's a sealed unit, which I'll talk a little bit more about in just a minute. Uh, aluminum body, and then it's also six pins, which you really don't see on padlocks too often, particularly of this vintage. Both of these locks, uh, I'm sorry, both of these keys are the original Corbins. There you go. And somebody apparently used this one to lock up their submarine, but that's another story. The important part here, take a look on both of these. The number, get out of there, tag. The both of, both of these numbers are identical, and that's actually the bidding. So you got 257314. And if you look at it, come on, focus. So you got two, five, seven, three, one, four. So there's your six pin. So a lot of guys ask if you take a picture of a key, can you then duplicate it? Well, the answer is yeah. Just make sure you take a picture of that part. No, just kidding. You're not going to find that anymore. They stopped doing this years and years ago for that exact reason. Anyway, this whole lock does work beautifully. Uh, it is not key retaining. Um, there is a locking pawl on both sides. Uh, it is spring-loaded, but this thing is manufactured with such nice tolerances that you really can't get a shim up inside of there to shim it open. So that's a good thing. So let's do a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to show you the easiest way I know to pick these because they all, all six pins are standard pins. So it's a real quick way to get into these whole things. The second thing I want to look at, because this is no longer a collector's item, you can see... Somebody used a wire brush on this thing and removed all the patina from the uh, from the shackle. And they also, at some point, wire brushed the body and rounded off all the sharp edges. It's now since got some age, some more age on it, but you can see it's, it's definitely not a collector's item. So what I thought I'd do is let's cut this open. And we're going to have to cut it because when you look at the lock, there's a seam down the side and, of course, on the top. On the bottom, they've got this weird line, these lines covering up. There's probably a seam right there. And then, of course, there's a seam over here. So I really don't know how they got this together. There's no screw or rivets to grind off. Uh, they probably took half of the shell, put the lock, all the mechanism inside, put the, put the other half on, and then somehow sealed it up. And I really don't know how they did that. be interesting to try to find that out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this thing, after we pick it, I'm going to clamp it up... Um, uh, in the milling machine and I'm just going to start milling from the top and hopefully we'll be able to get a look inside there and see exactly how everything's laid out and uh, see how they put it together. So let's go ahead and clamp it up in the vise first and I'll show you how to get in these things really quick. Alright guys, that thing's clamped up. It is locked and works beautifully. So let me go and lock, lock it back, get that key out of there. Let me show you how to get into these very quickly. They're all standard pins so you can either apply heavy tension and then force the pins in place, and that's pretty easy to do. But the fastest way i found to get in these old Corbins is get yourself top of the keyway and get a pick with plenty of rise and just slide it in there, apply moderate tension, and then just kind of drag your pick out and zip it open. I don't know why, but this works, at least as a hat, in the past, has worked really well for me. There we go, got an open. So that's how easy it is. Well, I'm, I'm not really about getting into this lock because it's really not that difficult to pick. I'm really more interested in how they put it together. So let me go ahead and mill this thing open and let's take a look at that. Alright guys, I was wrong as usual. It really does look as if this thing was press fit together. If you look very closely, you can see a seam right here around the edge there and the same uh, on the other side. So it looks like they cast the body, slid the shackle in, and then take, take the entire locking mechanism and press fit it in from the bottom. We'll figure that out later, but got it taken apart now. You can kind of see how it works. Um, you notice we have cutouts on both sides here, and when we slide it down the side of there, you can see how the locking pawls engage in those cutouts on both sides, so they're not lying to us. And these are held in place by this spring, so if we could reach a shim through there, we indeed probably could shim these, but because it's so tight, I, couldn't, I wasn't able to do that. So core comes in here, and we have a half moon on the back, and then it engages right there with the locking mechanism. When we turn the key, 
it compresses the spring, withdraws the two locking pawls from the cutouts, and we get an open. Very, very cool. Um, I think what I'm going to try to do now is go ahead and maybe I can unpress fit this thing and see, see if that's going to be successful. All right, guys, on the vise, I got this partially sorted out, and then the spring popped out for the two actuators. So there's your spring. We're just going to set them right there. Two actuators opposing each other, and the spring, of course, will keep them pushed apart and hold them in place. Let's get those guys out as well. Now what I notice is uh, the thing doesn't want to come out. It's getting caught up on something, and if you look closely at this little pin right here, see how when I flex him back and forth, he kind of turns? So that tells me he's the stress point. And, it, and in looking at it, that's probably what keeps the shackle in place. So if we just pop him out, just a little steel pin, this should slide all the way out of there. All right, then our shackle pops out, uh, completely cast aluminum body. Very cool. It's got a couple of guides. I noticed when we pulled it out, it's got a guide on the bottom to help slide it in and align everything. Once it's in place, they just peened over the bottom, and there were no evidence outside of how this thing was assembled. Pretty cool. This is the spring that keeps the shackle spring loaded, and then of course the core right there in the center. The Bible right there on top, sandwiched in between, come on camera, sandwiched in between those pieces of aluminum. Anyway, there you go guys, the Corbin six pin padlock. You know, it wasn't worth much as a collector item before, and it's worth a lot less now. Appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal.